Are you ready? Yeah, we're ready. For real now. Okay. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. We're the hosts of Geek Nights, and not that long ago, we did a show on Geek Nights. We took that chart. You guys know that chart. Well, not the Fall 208 chart. It was that kind of chart. Yeah. That is the chart of, here's all the anime that's coming and a tiny amount of information about it. Now, one, you guys are spoiled nowadays. Back in my day, there was no way to know when anime was coming. No. You went to the anime club and some really old dude would hand you a VHS tape like, this is Golden Boy, it was just fan subbed. Also, some dude would spend a lot of money for like the Japanese new type magazine and you would look through it and some pictures and some of the titles were in English and maybe one person in the room could translate some of the other titles. And that was all you knew about what anime was coming soon. But now we have these charts. So we decided, we had the great idea, let's review all the anime that were coming up just from the chart, doing no research and knowing nothing about the show. And in doing so, one, we pissed off a lot of our fans because they liked some of the shows we crapped all over. But two, we started to realize that a lot of anime can kind of be judged pretty accurately just by the promotional art and the cover. Yeah, now obviously, right, if you judge something based on a picture, a title, and less than a paragraph of text, you can get it wrong pretty easily, right? It's, it, they say, don't judge a book by a cover, and it's true, right? A lot of times you will see something, think it's one thing, and nope, it's actually another thing. But Have if you see a novel, plenty. and that novel has a girl in a chainmail bikini straddling a sword with a snake and this dragon in the background, you know exactly what that book's gonna be like. I mean, there's a small chance, small chance you could be wrong. Right? But odds are, no, you're not going to be wrong. You, you can judge that by the cover, yeah. So, we've noticed a few trends, and we'd like to point this out. Basically, the whole format of this is we're going to talk about some of the trends and things we've noticed. The sort of warning signs that a show is bad or a show is about a certain particular thing. And one of the most prominent ones I've noticed is shows about guns. Now, I want to point out that the girl is drawn in anime style, but that is not only a surprisingly accurate representation of that pistol. But it's drawn better than she is, and it's a real-world pistol. So clearly, this show, we already know, guaranteed, right, just as much as that chainmail bikini, this is a show targeted at those military gun otaku guys who, like, have airsoft weapons of everything because not allowed to have real weapons in Japan. But they also... And they're reading, like, gun magazines. But they also kind of want to see something about girls. Yeah. It's almost... I don't want to say it's a fetish thing, because it's not, but it's sort of like they fetish-size the guns and they put the girls in, by mixing it together, you get a really creepy show. Right? So, just based on the cover alone, it's like, don't judge by the cover? No, we can judge this by the cover. Little girls and accurately drawn guns. And now, it turns out that we're right. Now, it's specifically, if you look at all, one of the common signs, the way to know a show is a show about guns, is if you can actually say that that is a stare og. And it is. It is a real gun the from the real world. because that gun is also a Counter-Strike. I mean, look at that picture. That is from the show. That's also an FNP90. Which is also a Counter-Strike. Whatever dude has that as his background on his laptop, which of the things in this image does he care about more? <laughs> oh man, look at that machine. Well, I mean, if you look at the title, right? Girl is the last word in the title. The gun is the first word. So, sign number one, if a show has ultra-realistic representations of real-world guns. It is a show about guns. It's probably almost the same as Gunslinger Girls. Initial D is a show about guns. Just replace guns with cars. I mean, those faces and those PlayStation cars, but they're real cars. That is an actual car you can go buy. I mean, when this show came out, right, those CG cars were actually like the height of computer-generated animation, and the people were about 20 years dated in terms of, you know, cell animation of, you know, human beings. So you can tell, right, people really care, right? Those guns looked really like high-res because that show's a lot newer, right? If you watch Initial D now, the cars look like freaking Gran Turismo. They look like real cars. Now, another good example, you might remember a show that was pretty dumb called X-Driver. Now, people would have ignored X-Driver, except it had the same character designer as Oh My Goddess. And that dude freaking loves cars and motorcycles. The show is just a terrible, weird show, but if you look at the promotional art, the cars are accurate representations of current modern-day cars from the real world. That show is obviously about the cars because of those, those are the images in the promotional art. I mean, he's opening that up to show you. That's basically the equivalent of the guy with the desktop where the bikini's like just starting to fall off. So what about shows about guns? 
So Spice and Wolf and this show, in our opinion, have the same, not necessarily problem, but ostensibly, they're about economics. But really, they're about guns. <laughs> Now you can tell these shows, these are the shows that give the people who are watching them an excuse to say they like the show, and, and no, I just read Playboy for the articles. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing that actually bothers me more than porn. Like, if someone's watching porn, like, I personally believe if you want to watch porn, you can watch it, as long as it's not, you know, evil porn where someone was hurt me in the process, right? And if you want to watch that, good, right? But it's like these shows, there's a lot of them, especially in anime, where like, it's porn, but it like covers up things and it gives you an excuse to make, and it's almost worse, right? Because you're being dishonest about it. Like you're trying to hide in your shame hole, right? So someone, <laughs> right? So someone who's you know getting getting on with that sort of not actually porn and making an excuse, and it's sort of like I look down on that person a lot more than someone who's just you know fapping to straight up porn. It's like, okay, yeah, I, I guess it depends on where. I mean, if you're looking down on a guy who's fapping to straight up porn, yeah, not where are I'm you? I'm literally looking down on that. I'm figuratively looking down on them. But I mean, Spice and Wolf did this too. I was like, oh, this is going to be a show about some awesome goddess. This is going to be awesome. Oh no, she's kind of naked all the time. But it's technically about economics, so yeah. it's totally okay. I mean, that's something that actually bothers me too, is that like I'll be fooled into watching a show that was actually porn sometimes, right? It's like, <laughs> oh, a show's about economics. Awesome. I kind of want to watch that. It's like, oh, well, you tricked me. <laughs> well, I was tricked Not once. Again. I was tricked Only once into watching Dragon Pink instead of Dragon Half. Oh. Yeah, my mom wasn't too happy about that. <laughs> oh, you poor so if you watch a show that Dragon Half is like that Spice better. and Wolf or this show, I'm not saying the bad shows, we're just saying the people who say, oh no, it's about the economics and it's super cool. The economics in Spice and Wolf is super boring. You're watching it for the wolf girl. Don't even pretend to me. You're really just watching Shubra because they're all that show. <laughs> Shubra <laughs> is the epitome of this kind of show. This is a show we actually bit the bullet and made a sacrifice for all the people in this room and watched one whole episode of this. <laughs> what this is is a show that is ostensibly, and actually, yeah, it is an educational show about middle school girls' underwear. They literally do teach you, like, different shapes of underwear are good. Like, this one's yep, good. Like, this jeans. fashion designer, that fashion designer. When you can get away with this, when to show them a strap or whatever. Oh, well, your bra doesn't fit right. You should wear a bigger one. You should wear a smaller one. You should, right? And it's like, yeah, it has all that as an excuse for middle school girl porn. <laughs> so. This is not a show about guns, despite the fact that gun is in the title. Try gun. He's holding a gun. The plot is about guns. I won't spoil it, but yeah, there's three guns. Try gun. But yet, look, one, that, is no, that gun does not exist. That gun does not exist anywhere in the world. Two, the guns actually are the plot. The guns in Gunslinger Girls are just the vehicle for the fetishized sort of, this is an anime about guns and girls or whatever. And this, the Trigun, this is a show about pacifism and how it's a failed philosophy but that you should strive for it even though it cannot ever be realized. Guns are central to that kind of idea. This is not a show about guns. It's a show about pacifism and Vasha Sampede and Donuts that happens to have guns in it. So what about the fan service shows? Let me point something out here. There's kind of big, ridiculous breasts in Slayers. There's kind of big, ridiculous breasts in The Legend of Lenmere. Don't watch Legend of Lenmere. <laughs> oh, God. I posit that you can tell whether or not a show has hilarious fan service or creepy fan service based solely on the way the breasts are represented on the covers of the DVDs. Uh, why does the nipple have this light on it? Why is there a, like, there's one light source, but then there's got to be like this secondary point light right there. Like, look at that. You don't see any nipples here. No, those are just like, those are almost two complete circles, right? It's like, the one on the right could almost maybe be a real breast, kind of? No? But the one on the left, clearly, is just, it's a circle. Stage left? Yeah, what I can do? draw that. And also, look at the way this is presented. This is sort of secondary. It's there, but it's not central to the image. It's like pointing right at you with this show. If you look, they're both pretty close to the middle of the, you know, the, the image. But, you know, Naga's in terms of percentage of the total, you know, pixels that are there, only a very small number of them are breasts. I'd say at least, like, 10% of Legend of Lemire's pictures. Now, if you Google image search, which I'm not going to recommend, for Slayers... You're going to find a whole bunch of greasy pictures of ends exploding, and it's hilarious. If you Google image search for this, it's pretty much nothing but naked people. Also, it's a terrible show. Now, 
not saying fan service is bad. We're saying that you can tell when the fan service is going to be creepy or when the fan service is the only reason anyone watches that show in the first place. Some shows are only about the fandom, and it doesn't matter what the show's are. Does anyone know what that show is? That show, <laughs> wow, is Vice Cruise. So when we were at RIT Anime, this was the most popular show among the girls who were super into the yaoi type shows. This is about a bunch of boys who run a flower shop, but they're actually assassins. <laughs> this show is stupid as shit. The animation is terrible. Pretty much everything about this show is terrible, but it was stupidly popular in the anime club. People were writing fanfics, they were drawing fan art. You'd see so much fan art and cosplay about this show at the con. I'd say the percentage was half of a homestuck. <laughs> and yet now, no one remembers the show. That girl does. Yeah, so one person out of a room of however many people, two people, remember Weiss Cruz because the show was terrible. And I remember at RIT Anime asking people, yo, what's Weiss Cruz about? They hadn't even seen it. They just read the fanfics and looked at the fan art. They didn't know what the show was about, or they tried to watch it and realized it was terrible. I think there was even a sequel that not even the people who liked the first one watched. Now, I'm not saying this is going to be terrible. <laughs> this might be great. I, it does not matter if this show is great or terrible. What matters is that the focus of this show is pleasing a particular demographic out there. People are going ape shit about this show and it doesn't even exist yet. It, they're going based on this picture and what, 12 seconds of animation of a bun. <laughs> now, one way to figure out if a show is about the fandom is to do the Google image search. <laughs> so let's see, let's see right here, this is the top, cosplay. Uh, fan art, fan art in a particular way, the butt, <laughs> and a relationship chart. A relationship chart for a show that doesn't exist yet. Now, if you click on that relationship chart, that's not just some fan, that's official. <laughs> this show, regardless of if it's good or bad, is aimed at the people who are going to make fan art and fan works about it. So if you're going to watch that show, you got to be ready for this, because that's what they're making it for. The Google image search is the best way to know what a show is really about. <laughs> Zoom and enhance. You can barely read that chart, but obviously he's dating Kim, and I don't even know what these things mean. <laughs> so one thing that's always on these charts is the studio. It always says, here's a picture, here's a paragraph, here's the studio. Right, and people seem to think that like the studio will tell you what kind of show it's gonna be. And that's true to an extent, right? Like if it's Studio Ghibli, you know what to expect. But you know what, that's not a guarantee, right? Spirited Away, one of the best ever. Earthseed, one of the worst ever, right? <laughs> Both Studio Ghibli, that studio doesn't really tell you if it's gonna be good or bad, but it might tell you something about what you're about to see. Now furthermore, many of you will think this like, oh, Gonzo shows always have bad endings, or Madhouse Make goes like this, Satellite like this. Like, Prerer, you'll think of the names of studios, and you'll remember a few shows they did, and you'll be like, oh yeah, those all were kind of the same. I sat down and took, made a list of every show for the last few years that every major studio had made. They're all, all over the place. The tropes you think Gynex was known for in the 90s are way different from the tropes they'd be known for in 2001 yeah, Gynex, versus they made, 2003. They made Evangelion and they made Mohoromatic, right? It doesn't really get much further apart than that. So this is actually a red herring. People put way too much emphasis on the studio. And even further, do you know how many shows, if you actually look, yeah, so Satellite did the production, but they outsourced the compositing to these other three studios. There's so much turnover. People work for multiple studios. They move around. They share work. Studio is almost a useless indicator. Much more useful. Director, storyboards. Uh, the screenplay writer, what the original source material, was it a manga, was it a light novel? Uh, director is probably the most important, character designer maybe a little bit after that. But studio is not going to be a really good indicator of what the show is going to be like. There are exceptions. We're about to review a ton of anime that we haven't seen and we know nothing about on purpose. But if you just saw this screenshot, I saw this screenshot before Monica came out, and I was like, whatever, some magical girl show. Right, but then, right, about a few months later, this thread appeared in their forum. Well, um, Aji Madoka Magica. And the thread kept getting bumped to the top of the forum. I'm like, why does this thread keep getting bumped up? It's a magical girl show. So then I goes to investigate. And I'm like, oh, I mean, if everyone's talking about it, you know, I gotta, I'll watch it and see. And of course, it's like the best thing ever. But, <laughs> right, if there is an exception, if you go around like us judging things by their cover and you get it wrong, 
the internet will come and correct you. You'll notice, right, when there is an exception to the rule, it'll come around again, and you just have to be man enough to accept your mistake that you judged it by the cover the first time and give it another chance, right? If everyone starts talking about something, you are probably wrong, and that's, that's fine, that's great, because this means we can safely judge everything by the cover, and the 1% of the time we're wrong, we'll fix it later. Right? Another example, so the new My Little Pony, back when it came out, there was a post in our farm, and it said, hey guys, the new My Little Pony is actually really good, seriously, you should watch it. The next post was a picture of Fry from Futurama, not sure if troll. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like, yeah, whatever, and then, that thread kept growing and kept growing. It was on the front page of our forum for a couple years running. Yeah, something like that. So after it hit like a thousand posts, we're like, all right, we got to see what the deal is. And yeah, yeah. I already saw what the deal I was. I already like a thousand posts, more like ten posts. So you'll, you will never, ever will you miss an exception because the internet will tell you, and the exceptions are often some of the best shows. I cannot think of an anime better than Madoka that has come out since Madoka. Don't say Attack on Titan. It's too new. It's too close. You have to let things fester a little bit in your brain. And we haven't you know seen Attack on Titan yet, so we don't know. Watch it. So. Let's try. We seriously have done zero research. I know this nothing is... about any of these shows we're going to see. We literally just cut them up and pasted them in, right? We are going to complete, completely prejudiced and jerky and probably wrong and judge all these shows based on one picture. All right, Kingdom 2, sequel to the Kingdom TV series. I have never watched this. I'll bet it's kind of like Cooking Master Boy. I'll bet it's some sort it of... It does have a, sort of that Chinese art style similar to Cooking Master Boy. He's but... also got the sword. He's got the thick eyes. He's angry. Well, he's Anytime I right? see that... Well, it's, uh, you know, Warring States period of China, right? That's always their favorite, right? Yep. What's, that, what's that PlayStation game where all you do is hit buttons? Dynasty Warriors? Dynasty oh. Warriors, right? It's going to be just like that, right? It's going to be a fighting show, right? It's going to have that sort of visual style. It's going to be probably going to be pretty boring, you know? But I guess enough people watch the first one. It, maybe it's targeting, like, the eight-year-old I'm I am confident this show is going to be like Initial D or Cooking Master Boy, which is a show about the warring cooking states period and how generalship is determined by how good one cooks. I think it's going to be a show almost exactly like that. Basic shonen fighting, but with battles and maybe these guys lead armies. It definitely well, it looks to me, based on that picture, right? It has sort of the Naruto thing going on, where like the right side guy is like Naruto and the left side guy is Sasuke. Right? Yeah. You get that kind of, you know? So this is a show I would personally pretty much ignore because those shows don't interest me. But then again, someone might say it otherwise. All right, let's see what's going on here. Tama, you're a so it's a high school toaster. girl, but she doesn't look porny at all. Yeah, there's right? no danger signs in that picture she likes whatsoever. She photos and... Follow. With her father's old film camera. Now, I doubt this is an anime aimed at hipsters. No, this could actually... It has the potential, at best, to be sort of a sweet... Wait, wait, wait. Danger sign one. What? They tell you the kind of camera it is. Her father's old so film camera. So is the camera the gun? The camera might be the gun. It might be, but she's got a little, she's a little cell phone. No, know. but it follows her and her friends as she comes to love her new home. I'll bet this is a slice of life coming of age in a new town, and the camera is going to keep going back. She's going to keep having flashbacks to her dad or pictures her dad took. Maybe she'll go and try to take the same picture her dad took. I think it could be sort of, at best, like a sweet Makoto Shinkai kind of deal, right? Where it's sort of like, you know, calm and peaceful and, you know. The other important thing, it's a sequel, so that means whatever it was before was at least moderately successful. And two, it's an original. Mm. Originals can be either be really good or super crappy, but they're rarely just mediocre. See, I wish they would put on here what TV channel and time slot it was in, right? Because that tells you a lot more. If it's on, like, in the afternoon, that means it's, tar it's, you know, it's something that's good for, like, kids coming home from school. If it's on at, like, 1 in the morning, you know, it's for perverts, right? So if, it's an <laughs> if it's actually an OAV or an OVA, that's very different than if it's a TV show. They do show tell you movie. that on these charts. They tell you OVA movie or TV series. Yeah, but they usually put it in a separate section. Yeah, so I really wonder, like, this could, you know, is this a Noe Tomina show? That means it's great no matter what, right? We don't know that. Yeah. Yeah, but basically, look, point out, there's no warning signs whatsoever. The only thing we can figure out is that it might have a gun in it. <laughs> this is definitely uh -oh. Uh -oh. a corny fan service I crap see, I show. See six guns look, look at that. Look at that. It's like a softball. And the fact that they're so prominent, and they're like the a light. A pair of idols using Simpho gear. The what light is coming in from for? this angle, and yet there's, oops, there's extra light just to make sure you see that boob up there. <laughs> also, proper nouns that are made up in this, yeah, Sifo gear. This is gonna be a terrible show. Yeah. This is gonna be, this is gonna be 
I think Dirty Pair would be a better show to watch than this. Absolutely. If you want fan service fighting in space. Because at least Dirty Pair is like funny fan service fighting in space. It has other aspects to it that are redeeming. This one, I can't even detect any redeeming aspect whatsoever in any of this. Now, it's also a sequel, so I guess there was one before. I guess they put all the sequels at the beginning of the chart. They might. Yeah. Yeah, this show, I defy anyone to come to us after the show comes out and tell us to our face it is not terrible and those well, moves they, are not horrible. Well, they can just watch the first series. It's already out, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, the second one's probably going to be really similar to the first one. I doubt you can have a Gundam Seed Destiny situation when your show is a boob show. True, because notice the shows where the sequel is way different from the original are shows like Big O. Big O 1, robot punching another robot in the face. Big O 2, Evangelion with tomatoes. <laughs> All right, so I'm worried now. There's a warning sign. This could be good, this could be bad, but the angle right there really worries me. The fact that they had to show you the leg going in and the little bit and the someone who's clearly like six years old. I'm, just, I'm always worried whenever you get that sort of angle on a young looking character. But mystical tarot cards, reading destinies. Yeah, I mean, at best, it's Card Captor Sakura, but it feels to me like it's going to be worse. At best, Card Captor Sakura. At worst, that creepy Alice in Wonderland magical girl show. <laughs> Okay, this looks pretty good already. This actually, I'm liking this, right? See, the boob is there, but it's a tasteful one. It's, it's a not, human boob. It's not shiny, right? It's a little big, it's a little unnecessarily big, but it's not unrealistic, right? And it centers on employees of a government ward office and it follows the Oh, that's so up my alley. That's amazing. Government employees? You know what this is going to be? This is going to be like uh, Planetess or oh. Pet Labor. It's going to be just all the people in the office dealing with their office crap, and it's going to be funny. I think I'm gonna watch this. Yeah, it's got a good style. It's got thick lines. It's based on a manga, right? So that manga is if it was, the manga was popular enough to warrant. See, when it's an original show, right? You don't. It's sort of like a risk for them. You don't know it's good or bad. But when something's based on a manga, that means you know we don't know the, you like the manga or not. But it means the manga was popular enough to get an anime made out of it. Yeah, now the manga, in the old days, manga would be super popular. They wouldn't make an anime. They'd make a terrible OAV. If you take good manga from the early 90s and see an OAV of it, if you see a tape, just burn it. Don't even try to watch it. Now, I've, this is totally a prejudice, but I've noticed lately the shows that I find to be the most interesting that come out recently tend to have thicker lines around the characters. I think that's just a stylistic thing that's kind of random, and it might not be 100% true, but it's been something I've noticed. All right, uh -oh. that show. Uh -oh. So it's not the, the nipple's kind of there, but it's hidden, but that shiny spot right there. Well, that you can see, shot. warning sign number one is obviously the image, but warning sign number two, six volumes of light novels. Yeah, light novels usually are leaning in the pointy direction. Yeah, even good ones like Shin Sakayori, a recent show that came out from the New World, super good. But it's kind of a lot more sexually charged in the light novel, and the manga is porn. <laughs> Straight up awful porn. <laughs> So I'm going to It doesn't assume. even tell us what's it about. It just says the seven, second season. Now, here's a warning yeah. sign. Second season is in quotation marks. <laughs> what? The second season arc of the Monogatari series. Now, it's Shaft, but I don't know. Between the shininess and that image, I'm going to assume this is yeah, a Yeah, because really her facial show. expression is sort of like, oh, don't hurt me. That's pretty bad. <laughs> That's awful. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so I posit... That over the last, I don't know, 10 years, there have been at least 20 shows where girls wear this exact kind of outfit with the little stripes and it's white and the yeah, bow like, and maids? the boobs are hanging out and there's that little black line kind of making sure you get that definition. Right, and the thing is, it's like high school, but it's like, that's like half made. Half wait a minute, wait a minute. The story follows a dim-witted, lecherous second year high school student who is killed, wait, 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 who is killed by a girl on his first date. Reincarnated as a devil, serves as an underling of a girl who's the prettiest girl on campus. This is going to be goony comedy with a lot of sexual comedy and a lot of, oh my god, bloody nose, oh my god, I fell on your boobs. Oh my god, light novels again. Take Tenchi Muyo and make it half as funny and twice as porny. That's what I'm going to guess that is. That's exactly. Oh, huh. maybe this could be Recorder, okay. No, let's see. Yet. Recorder to Rondo Sedermi with a little star. A sequel, another sequel to wait another show. Wait a minute, wait a minute. An elementary student, elementary, they're getting young. They're slowly <laughs> 
whose build and appearance is the same as a typical adult man. Warning sign, warning sign, she's and, technically 18. And Atsumi, his sister, is a high school girl whose appearance is like an elementary student. Oh yeah, she's, she's actually high school age, but she looks like an elementary school girl, watch out. That's a huge warning sign that the show is terrible. We they had a friend. encounter misunderstandings, right? Yeah, there's no boobs because you're a pedophile, that's why. <laughs> Stay the hell away from this thing. Now, the image itself wouldn't trouble me, but because of the age stuff there, I'm worried. Because we knew a dude way back at RIT. And I walked into a conversation, this is the RIT Anime Club, and I'm up at the front like doing my thing. And I walk over toward a conversation, and I hear the words literally... Well, technically, Sami's 700 years old, and I just walked away. Nope. <laughs> nope. I mean, yeah, even shows, there are shows that, like, this could have been, like, Bunny Drop, right? Now it's, like, the Bunny Drop anime, and it's, like, good, but then apparently, right, after that part, it becomes Lolicon, and it's, like, why? Has you anyone seen Bunny movie? Drop? Do you know what the show's about? All right, so the show's about a dude who basically adopts this cute little girl, and it's this, after, like, her parents die. And it's this great comedy slice of life of like a guy. It's who's like a Yotsubo, but a little bit more serious, a little bit less skewed. But yeah, then there's a time skip and they start dating. It's the, it basically his daughter, right? It's totally screwed up. All right, this is. All right, all right, all right. No warning signs so, so far. This is probably going to be some sort of wacky comedy with a cast of girls. Yeah, this could be sort of like Gatekeepers ish in a way. A homestay in Great Britain. This might be more like Nietzsche Joe. Or like K-On. Well, it's not as crazy as Nietzsche Joe, right? So then maybe more like K-On, where it's a group of girls hanging out doing their thing. Airmail arrives from Alice, a girl in the host family Britain. Britain, host family Britain. There's going to be a lot of jokes about cultural misunderstandings and tea, I'll bet. <laughs> it does seem like there is going to be some sort of adventure going on here, right? So maybe this like, you know, just a, a team innocently adventuring without really any... This show might be on. a little bit moe. But not creepy Moe. It might be Moe, like, what was that show with Funga? I don't remember. We saw some Moe show. And, you know, Moe shows often have this sort of edge of, yeah, this is cute, but I worry about why the guy next to me is watching it. <laughs> I don't think this has the creep factor. So I, I, there's no danger sign that this is a bad show. It might be cute yeah. and funny. But there's nothing that's really showing to me that this is going to be a great show worth watching, right? It's the kind of thing where if there's a big thread in our forum that says, Kini Ro Mosaic, right? And it keeps popping up, then I'll know something's up. But if this, not, I don't need to go look at it. This is the kind of show I would watch the first episode of on Crunchyroll, and then, like, review it on Geek Nights. Like, oh, this is okay. Yeah. Or maybe it's not. Maybe we were wrong. <laughs> okay, so this is season two of something that we already know out there. Generic fighting adventure. This is obviously fighting adventure. Uh, take Slayers, but make it a little more fighting. Maybe halfway between Slayers and Goku. like a Rave Master kind of thing to me. I hated Rave Master, but Where some people like Rave Master. the last 13 episodes. Now, the plot of this ma makes me think it might be more like Gogudo. Basically, the king decreed that the descendants of the hero must take, take on the threat, and 75 dudes show up. And we follow hero number 45. Yeah, you know why? This is exactly what's going to happen. He's going to fight... I'm the 45th strongest man on Mitsuo's He's going to fight 74 <laughs> other dudes, and each one takes 10 episodes to fight. And then eventually, number one is like at the end, all this mysterious dude. And then after you beat number one, number zero is the king. I'm going to say... The king is number zero. This is a three-way combination of Rave Master, Gokudo, and Slayer. You could almost say that each one of those 75 guys is one of the shards of the freaking crystal of Inuyasha. <laughs> That's why they're on season two. They're going to need like ten now, seasons to get all those things. I would be worried about a show that has the word doll in the title. And doll is used as a proper noun. I mean, it's even in quotation marks yeah, around doll. Yeah, they to basically refer to like robot girl, right? It's but And the girls, the girls fight and power up special cards. Right, so it's, you know, this, it's a little porny in the design of these characters, but not porny. too bad, right? This is it's not, not too bad. It's not a porn. What this mostly is to sell this game, right? Sort of like that, uh, what's that Dominion made game? Uh, Tanto Yeah, it's Tanto Kori, basically, but they're trying to sell some other game that's not Tanto Kori. No, this, this doesn't remind me of porn. This character design reminds me of dating sim. Yeah, basically. We don't know enough about it other than dolls. I'm going to assume it's a magical girl fighting thing, very video game-esque with cute character designs that I worry won't actually animate that well. Because anytime I see a show that has a super good sort of like interesting character design, it's very rare that it's animated the way the promotion was. Because you notice it says original down there, right? 
right? So that means if they're going to do some games, the games are going to be based on this as opposed to it's based on an existing game. Otherwise, it would say game down at the bottom. Bloodland. <laughs> if I didn't know anything, I'd assume the show will feel like a show called Darker Than Black just because of the way the characters look. It looks like X to me. I know it's got the cool quirky guy in the background who is either really funny or really creepy. It's hard to tell with a show like that. That guy's yeah, only gonna be. That's like the silent guy on the team, like the pyro, or is that like? Well, I'm glad that shy guy found a job at least. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. This might be funny. Bloodlad follows Staz, a vampire obsessed with the human world. So it's a human otaku. <laughs> I guess that's the guy in the bottom left, we're assuming. That could be pretty funny, actually. And a girl who was killed and turned into a ghost that's wandering the, the demon right. world? Yeah. You know what? This is going to be a supernatural comedy. Yeah, I don't know how comedy it's going to be. I think it's going to be more comedy I than serious. I think it's going to be more fighting with, uh, you know, that sort of supernatural style. Right? All right, you know what? I'm going to say, because I was burned by this, when I saw Bleach, the character designs, and the first episode, I was like, this is going to be awesome. Oh, wait, it's shown in fighting. So, Lita, oh, this is gonna be awesome. Oh, wait, it's just fighting. This might be halfway back from fighting and closer to supernatural comedy. Because solely, Vampire Otaku. Where have we seen that before? Yeah, it could be more like a darker than black kind of situation. Darker than black has mystery from space. I don't think yeah. the show has the mystery the of space. The thing that really makes me think it's more about fighting is just like the shapes of their faces, right? The way those characters <laughs> are designed more simply tells me that they're gonna be less used for drama and more used in action scenes. Right? Because they're simpler to draw like that. All right, fine. I'll give you 33% supernatural comedy. Fine. There's no the manga, you can go find out. There are no danger signs. Yeah. Oh, oh I'm all about the show. Good. I don't even know good. what it's about. All right, let's see. Comedy. Oh, a tanuki and a tengu. Oh, man. Uh-oh. This is good. So... This might just be a prejudice for us, but I like the shows that are different from all the other shows. I like the shows, like there's a show you can see on Crunchyroll right now called Japanese Folk Tales. It is just cute animations of for real Japanese folk tales. It's great, but that's kind of up my alley. This is a show that's kind of up my alley. And again, look, it's got the thick lines, like I pointed out before. If it's animated like this, double down, it looks like it's cute and it's about supernatural folk tale Japanese kind of stuff. Yeah. The greater, the less percentage chance a show has of being licensed in the U.S., the greater percentage chance that we will enjoy it. Right? So the chance of this being licensed in the U.S. maybe like one percent. Right? Now, also, I point out, not light novel. This is based on a novel. Uh. Novel, real book, big boy book. <laughs> Someone who's literate. I am confident that whatever this is, it's going to be worth watching. Uh oh. Okay. It's got the word love in the title, and it's high school, and the skirts, and but, the but, but, but. three kinds of girls. No warning signs. Nothing creepy yeah, about any of this. Those aren't bad. All right, let's see. All right, now, here's the danger. Here's the danger. It actually uses, uses that word. Uses the word sundere in the description. So, here's when sometimes, if you want to know if a show is porn or love stuff, do the Google image search. Oh, I didn't do it. So, I did a Google image search of this show. And it's basically all relationship charts. This is going to be basically like Yuri dating sim, as far as I can tell. Another thing you can tell, right, even if character designs aren't super porny, these are like a little bit tiny, right? Is no, that they're more cute. When they try to cover, you know, it's a harem show, when they try to cover every kind, right? They try to get one for everybody. So it's like Love Hina is, the, is like a great example, right? It's like there's one kind of girl in that house, so that no matter which kind of dude you are, you're going to like one of them, right? So it's like, oh, we got glasses girl, we got main character girl, we got sort of quiet, shy girl, and I bet this more of them, right? You know, that aren't in that picture. Yeah, so. Google image searching. It's a girls' elite school, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be all sort of like cute romance. It won't actually be porn. There's no way this show will actually be porny. It's just going to be cute and implied romance, yeah. and probably at least a few people falling on yeah. each other's Shows boobs. like this can be annoying sometimes because it's like you watch it and you can enjoy it honestly without you know it being porn. But no, there's some other guy who's fat into it, and it's like. Uh, as long guy. as he's not in the same room with you, it's fine. <laughs> right, but it's like some guy turns your non porn into porn with his Like, here's an aside at a convention. Porn. You know how there's 18 plus like hentai showings at anime cons? In my 12 years of going to anime con experience of life, if you walk into one of those rooms and everyone's laughing, that's a good room to be in. If you walk into that room and everyone's silent, nope. nope. <laughs> All right. Season two again. All right. Really big boobs that somebody's reaching around and grabbing from behind. Look at that little hand there. 
Four high school girls in a tennis club. So but it's a sequel. I don't think they're playing a lot of tennis. I'll so. bet they are. This but is going to be... If you want to see tennis, just get Prince of Tennis. Don't bother. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, come on. This show, I think, is just going to be cute playing tennis girls with a little bit of moe and no, a whole bunch of the tennis wacky comedy. is an excuse for some dead or alive kind of activities. <laughs> I don't think that's going to be the case. You want to bet on it? Because they're not, while they're big, Those there's not a lot of definition and there's no shininess and no nipple. Those are beach balls. <laughs> they're not going to bounce even half as much as dead or alive. You're not playing tennis right now. That's a silly uh oh. Alright, so good. just from, again, my prejudice, this is the kind of show that I think is going to be great because anytime you see a show that is specifically a manga that you would see in a Japanese bookstore that will never, ever, ever be in English, it's got to be the best one. This is going to be Hikaru no Go, except instead of Go, it's agriculture, and it's a rich dude learning how to get shit done. This is going to have some of that camaraderie like, comedy. Look, it. that guy's super serial. That guy's kind of weird. That guy's the main guy who's super earnest and really wants to make the farm work. There's a cow hanging out up here. I can definitely watch this guy. It's no, what it, oh, it doesn't say, there's no studio listed. It's yeah. just a manga, and it's, all right. Based on a manga, cool character designs. It's going on the list. This is this is out of the box. I would assume this is worth watching. Okay. Right. Okay. So, Mr. wacky Mr. comedy Connie. maybe, but scissors. <laughs> Absurd mystery comedy. All right. This looks like it's about a guy who gets killed, resurrected as a dachshund. <laughs> and is adopted by a sadistic novelist, and it says this, quote, uses scissors to abuse him. Oh, I assume she's like cutting the dog's hair, right? I mean, look at well, the look hair at the top of his head, yeah. Now also, it's Gonzo. Now I said studio usually doesn't matter, but all those combined, I don't think this is gonna be a creepy show. Let's do the Google image search. So the scissors are in almost all of these Wait, images. Are you saying the scissors are the gun? I, unless you can tell me what name brand of scissor that is. Discard? I'm pretty sure this is going to be, those scissors are going to be the recurring joke like, oh my god, Edward Alaric, look how short you are. Yeah, it's going to be. It's like, it, yeah. oh my god, dog, you made a mistake. I'm going to punish you now. That's going to happen once per episode. Oh my god, Menchie, we're so poor, we're going to eat you. It's going to be that joke. This is going to be dark comedy. That girl is creepy. I'll bet she is just like Misa Misa without the ability to actually kill yeah, people. Yeah, it says it's a mystery, right? So it's probably going to be like an episodic thing where each episode, her and the dog have to go and solve the mystery, and she's basically torturing the dog and making it miserable while it helps. So and I'll like bet... Penny and Brain, but Penny is evil. No, I'll bet she's going to be Inspector Gadget, and she never solves the mystery. He solves it, she takes the credit, and then she blames him. <laughs> I think this is going to be kind of funny. Yeah, I don't know if I'd watch it though. It's, you know, we'll see. If someone starts talking about it. All right, Brothers Conflict. All right, the word brothers is already bothering me. All right, now, this character design is not like the porny stuff. This looks more like a early 80s shoujo manga. Well, let's think about other things with the word brother, like brother, dear brother. <laughs> well, brother, dear brother, I have nothing to say about she brother, She suddenly dear brother. gets 11 brothers? Maybe it's a dude harem and we just don't see the dudes in the shop. Wait a minute, suddenly 11 brothers. This could be a Marmalade Boy situation, but it's a girl. From 32 years old down to 11 years old, they're covering any possible taste in dudes. All right, <laughs> obviously this picture was cropped out, so we don't know what's going on in the background. Let's do the GIS. All right, this is obviously a girl and guy. Right. Look, right. relationship chart. Implied relationship between two dudes. Oh, I see. When you get 11 dudes in the house, it's not just about which one the girl's gonna, you know, which brother she's gonna end up with. This is gonna says. be about all the drama of exists. all the brothers with her, with other families, with each other, with their friends. Is he gay or not? Is he gonna date him? What's going on? This show is not for me, but it's probably not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's for someone. I'm kind of worried. What the it. hell? It's like a squirrel? She's going to have a pet. The cute pet is probably going to bring the only comedy in the show. No, that pet actually makes me think of Candy Candy. Her face actually makes me think of Candy Candy. I wonder if this will be like Candy Candy, but with a whole candy bunch candy of dating. Candy Candy did 11 brothers. But she did live in an orphanage. Yeah. All right. This madhouse 
Little girl, big weapon. This is going to be the generic semi-blockbuster pseudo-fighting mystery in space show. At, this, be at best, it'll be Scrap Princess. This is the darker than black. Look, blah, 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 proper noun in quotes, gravekeepers, their task. This show is going to be all about the proper noun mysteries of the world, and these characters are going to break the mold. Her job's to be a gatekeeper, a gravekeeper, but then she's going to not do the job because that's going to be the secret mystery in the plot. This is darker than Black 2. It's Madhouse, based on a light novel. Doesn't look porny. Yeah. It'd probably just be, you know, one of those shows. Her name is I, so I wonder if there's going to be something where she falls in love. One day, a boy shows up. Okay. Generic middle-of-the-road anime, easily forgotten. All right, this description is kind of oddly... I see this a lot, because a lot of times fans write these descriptions for these charts. Why is this so specific? One day, a boy named Hanpuni Haba, Hanbado appears and begins firing his pistol indiscriminately. And That's setting a, the village on fire. That's an oddly specific way to introduce the core conceit of a show. I think that's just a bad way to recommend anime. People tend to... I don't to... even get that information for a show that's not going to be out until summer of 2013. They know exactly what happens in episode one. Oh, wait. Well, so this guy confronts him with the shocking truth. It's definitely going to be a darker than black. The mystery of space gets resolved because she does something different from what she was. She's a mold breaker, and that's the end. Mm -hmm. But if you're recommending anime, we did a panel on this before, but this is a good example of if you're going to explain the core conceit of a show, don't explain the oddly specific detail of the first episode. Say something like, you know, this is a show where the village has these traditions, but it turns out they're wrong, and they're blocked off from the outside because of blah. That show is porn. <laughs> there is no way that show is not awful. All right, next. <laughs> it's shiny. They're tiny girls. We already had it's a tennis shiny. one, and now we have basketball. But the tennis one was not shiny. It was flat. It was matte. This one is shiny in every conceivable way. Tight pants, exposed belly button. This well, show. Well, that's because she's jumping. There's going to be a lot of jumping when you play basketball. I feel creepy just having this on screen. That's why I said to change it quickly. Also, a title like that, no show with a title like that is going to be good. All right. long, a long name usually means interesting things. Zaizen Jotaro? Yeah. So this that character design, see, there's one character in here that really stands out is the guy, Mr. Potato Head right there, Mr. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty. Right, Mr. Humpty Dumpty tells me this show is going to have something exciting. So I would say this reminds me of video game aesthetics. It reminds me of nine doors, nine you hours, read, nine whatever. You read that text, and this is telling you this is one of those plot, you know, rules things. Right? Oh, Battle Royale, they were 11, yep. right? The nine, rules of the Death Note. You can write this, but not that. Right, You're so all trapped is, in a room. There's two jerks on stage. The school and here are the rules. Kill another student without getting caught. Oh my god, after a murder, there are many students holding the trial with their lives. Wait a minute, wait a minute. minute. This is Mafia or Werewolf, the anime. But you actually have to have a murder each night, and if you pick the if you don't get the if you don't find out who the killer is correctly in the trial, then everyone does. Now we're right, because it is in fact based on a game. And that's the evil you know what this is actually also like uh Bokurano, right? Because there's some evil uh, creature that's imposing this on them. So you're saying that's Dung Beetle or Cube? Yes, that is who that is. Yeah, that spoilers, Cube is not a nice guy. No. <laughs> You know what? I kind of want to see this. Yeah, I mean, it's not, I don't think it'll be better than the existing things it's borrowing from, but it's like, I kind of like that sort of trope, and I want more of But notice personally. how specific of a genre that is. The genre of, we have a whole bunch of incredibly specific world-building rules that the characters have to follow. Because then you watching it, one, you're going to be thinking, well, what would I do? Well, the rule says this, why don't they do it? The reason Death Note was so popular is because those characters use those rules and rules lowered them worse than the fattest dude you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons with. <laughs> and notice this, right? This is based on a game, so there is some game out there that is this thing, right? And that game is very unlikely to ever be translated, but pretty much almost every anime gets fan subbed or brought over or streamed, right? So we'll actually be able to see this one. That sounds good. Fate Collide Liner. All right, I'm I'm worried. Oh, a spinoff of Fate Stay Night. People like that show. Yeah, it seems okay. I didn't watch it though. It's a generic <laughs> magical girl show. There's nothing creepy about it. Nothing I creepy guess at all. I it's a spinoff, so maybe like one of those characters is a character from Fate Stay Night, and it's like all about them and their magical girlness. I would assume it is just a magical girl show. It looks Sailor Moony. I don't know. 
No, it looks more CCS-y, card capture soccer y well, It's definitely not fancy Lala y Nothing's fancy Lala y except fancy Lala. Yeah. Right. Uh oh, look at down low. Oh, oh look, my. Look at, look at the pose she has leaning forward like this. Right. Hey, boys. Okay. She's upside down. Wait, anime adaptation of a role playing game? So. It's pretty rare that an anime based on a role-playing game is going to be good. Can you even name one? That was good or that existed? That's good. Yeah, I'm moving on. Oh. This, is, this got delayed like twice. It's well, not even coming out yet. We don't know when it's coming out. I don't think we need to you know, say anything about it. No, we said studio doesn't matter. But one, if it's Toei, then it's probably going to be some great classic rebrought out. It's going to be some big money, big deal thing. Toei and, is one of the old standards. And the fact that it is delayed tells you they're working really hard on it and putting a lot of production <coughs> value into it, right? If, if, you know, it doesn't take a long time to put on a piece of crap. Awesome. Okay. Now, what's interesting, let's say it was coming out. Now, we know the reason they used a picture from the manga is because no one knows what this thing actually really looks like yet. We don't have a lot of information about the new Sailor Moon. The rumor is that the new Sailor Moon, and I didn't research this, I just knew it because I, uh, so there was a time before digital fan subs and before really internet where I mailed a bunch of VHS tapes to a guy called VKill and he mailed them back to me with uh, all 200 episodes of Sailor Moon fan subbed. And that's how I watched it all one weekend. Kind of into Sailor Moon. So there's a rumor that the new Sailor Moon is going to be much closer to what the manga is like. The manga is way more like Green Lantern than you would expect, and a lot less like the anime you actually and saw. And you can see that rumor is sort of semi-confirmed if we believe the chart, because it says manga at the bottom, as opposed to sequel of the anime or anything like that. Well, it couldn't really be a sequel after what happens in episode 200 of Sailor Stars. Right. All right, all right, really? It looks like pumpkin uh, 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 Let's see, that's an FNP-90. Uh-oh. Uh, I don't know the name of that gun, but a gun friend of ours recently posted a picture of that gun in our forum and talked about it. So whatever that gun is, is a real gun. So the gun is the gun, is what you're saying. This is a gun show aimed at Airsoft fanboys. Oh, Gynex made it, though. So I guess Gynex... Gynex also made show. Mahoramatic. Yeah, the Mahoramatic team. Good job, guys. Super good. Keep this video. is totally going to be a show where you follow a bunch of girls playing their airsoft, and explaining airsoft to you, but you're also seeing the cute girls doing the cute thing, so the guy who's super into airsoft can watch this and fantasize about girls playing airsoft with him. <laughs> Seriously, the P90, why is that the sign? Uh, and it's high school girls, quote, parentheses, who look super good in miniskirts. <laughs> <laughs> playing airsoft. Okay. So... Obviously, we might be wrong about some of these shows. It's possible. If we are wrong, one, I would love for you to tell us that we were wrong. Yeah, because, we need to find out those exceptions like Monica. I don't because we can refine our heuristics. We do a lot of lectures at like the Penny Arcade Expo. One thing we always talk about is that we study game theory. Yes, you can look at some crazy complex board game and do the math and play perfectly. But humans can't do that fast enough in their heads, and humans suck at that. So you develop heuristics. You as an anime fan, want to watch anime, I assume, or Homestuck, I guess. But <laughs> at the same time, you can't watch every anime, and most anime reviews, unless you know who to follow, it's very difficult to figure out what to watch next without wasting a lot of time. You need to figure out a heuristic, which is sort of a rule of thumb to eliminate the shows that are obviously not up your alley. If you like shows about guns, you have a great heuristic now. If I see a Fabrique National P90 submachine gun in any art, that shows for me and you know immediately how to find the shows that are for you. So develop heuristics to discard the shows that are obviously not up your alley, find the shows that are up your alley, and then your friends will tell you about the exceptions. They'll do that, what do you mean you haven't seen Madoka that you've probably all heard all weekend, if you haven't seen Madoka. I mean, think about it, your life is only gonna be so long, right? I don't think we're gonna have immortality before anyone here you know, hits the bucket. So. You know, you only have so much time to enjoy entertainment or enjoy other things in life. You should be really freaking selective and only watch and read and listen to the best of the best of the best, right? And don't waste your time on something that's, you know, crap. 
Anime they, recommendations right. come from a very different place now from where they used to. But every minute that you spend trying to decide between which thing to watch next is a minute you could have spent watching a thing. It's basically, you know, even worse than watching a bad thing is spending time thinking about it, right? You need to develop this way to very, very quickly come to those decisions by judging things by their cover and then also listening if you missed something and, you know, not feeling uh, like... You know, you have to stick with your original judgment. You can't, you know, if someone tells you Monica's really good and you thought it was stupid based on the picture, it's like, you know, accept it. Now, some shows fool you in really crazy ways. For example, there's a show you might remember called Hack Sign. There's another show you might remember called Noir. And those shows had one thing in common. They had pretty good character designs, a really good sort of core conceit, like what the plot is, and the best music. Yes. But those shows were but. They were, in my opinion, they were butt. But I watched Hack Sign all the way to episode 13 before I realized that nothing had happened in 13 episodes because the music was so good. It was so good. And then uh, I watched Noir all the way to the end because the music was so good. I was like, I gotta figure out what the mystery is. The end of that show is Nuns with Guns and Lava. <laughs> so then a new show came out, El Cazador de Bruje, uh... with the same music. The same good, and I person. said, wait a minute, there have been two shows with this good music so far, both of them were not good. And I sure enough. this show is not going to be good. And sure enough, it wasn't. But then, a little while later, a show you might have heard of called uh, Monica Magica came out with that same music. But it was good, but our heuristic was wrong, and we ignored it because a good-looking show with good music by them is probably bad. And Monica broke that mold. And luckily, the entire internet told us we were wrong. But it's super hard to figure out how to watch what anime there is, and for us it was easy. In the 80s, when I started watching anime, you watched every single anime you could get in English, because there wasn't that much. You'd go to Suncoast Video and spend 40 bucks on a Ranma one half subtitled VHS tape that had three goddamn episodes on it. And you'd watch it 30 times, if that. So then, when we got to the RIT Anime Club, they had a library. We checked stuff out. You know how we figured out what to watch? The old dude would sit there and say, these are the best 10 anime. Two, because the fan subbers only fan sub the best stuff, and the studios fan sub the best stuff, and they had decades of anime to choose from, most of the anime that you'd pick up randomly was the grade A anime. Evangelion, Escaflone, Trigon, all these shows came out relatively contemporary to one another. But during that time, a lot of crap anime came out, too. When you think back, oh, the 90s were like the golden age of anime. Now, you just don't remember all the terrible shows. Because they now, bring them out in English. Now, we have the internet. We, just, we see every freaking show that comes out. So as a result, it's easy to think that most shows, gar most shows are garbage. It's easy for people to say, oh, I don't like anime anymore. So the easiest way to find the good stuff is to not immediately watch anything that just came out and wait to see what gets buzzed what people are interested in, and what show from the previous season everyone's still talking about. Next year, everyone's still going to be talking about Madoka. Yeah, I don't know why people are, a lot of people seem to be in a rush, like watch something as it comes out. It's like, shows don't go stale, not like bread that turns moldy, and if you eat it a year late, it's going to poison you, right? Show's still good, you know, whether it's 5, 10, 15, 20 years old, right? So, you know, Attack on Titan's the hot thing right now, but you know what, I got a lot of other books, movies, video games to play, thing, you know, things to do, comics to read. I'm not going to run out and watch it right now. I'm going to get to it, obviously, because if it's, it's, this many people are talking about it, I got to see what's up. But I can wait until the whole thing's out. What's my rush? Now, right? I, I learned that and lesson. suddenly, if, if, during my waiting period, if somehow people stop talking about it, I go, oh, I guess I didn't need to watch that. Of course, sometimes you have to watch it right now because the buzz is so crazy and you don't want to have to deal with every anime con. What do you mean you're not watching Attack on Titan? Ah! Right. Uh, I guess the last moral is there's way too many perverts working in the anime industry. <laughs> I mean, really, it is, it is a serious. Like, why is such a large percentage of the new animes coming out, like Lolicons and Moe's and things like that, right? It's, it's really, it's, it's disgusting. Right? We need to go and have other people make anime that aren't perverted, right? Because it's like... Well, is not the American younger... superhero comic book industry running into a similar it is, problem? I mean, it's been the same... Both of them are equally disgusting, right? I mean, this is really a serious issue, and people st stop spending money on this shit, so it'll go away. I mean, you want the warning signs of an American comic? If there's a girl on the cover where the cleavage of her breasts and the cleavage of her butt are in the same angle... <laughs> 
So what I encourage you to check out, there's a thing if you haven't heard of it called the Hawkeye Initiative. It's people redrawing Hawkeye in the ridiculous poses that people like Catwoman are put into. <laughs> Hawkeye plays it pretty well. Now, in terms of Scott's waiting, I have a final anecdote for you. Way back in the day, I was watching Escaflone. How many of you have seen Escaflone? Okay, good All right, all right, so you guys know that there's some... Pretty much every episode is a crazy cliffhanger. There's one that's more than the other. So my Dungeons and Dragons group in high school would play D&D &D for like 12 hours, and then we'd take our tape of Escaflone, the first one that was out, we'd watch one episode. And we swore we'll watch one episode per week, and then every month we'll buy the next VHS tape. And on the first weekend of every month, we'd watch all four episodes immediately. The fourth episode would end on some ridiculous cliffhanger, and then we'd have to wait. 31 days. <laughs> One time, we finished like the, the VHS tape, and then the next month comes, and we're ready to play D&D. We go to the store, and it was sold out. We drove an hour north to find a store that had it, buy it, drive an hour back, grab the VCR, watch it immediately. If you just wait a season, you will never have to deal with that again in your life. I think we should pretty much wrap it up. We're about yeah. out of time. I gotta get some dinner. Absolutely. I hope this was entertaining. We're not going to take questions. I mean, what if question you, could you possibly ask? If you have a question, if you want to tell us how wrong we are, that show is actually not about guns and super good and you guys are jerks, you can email us. Or maybe you're gun guy. You can tweet at us guy. with our hashtag and tell us how bad we are. The whole world will see. That's it. And enjoy the rest of Anime Boston. You won't see us again. <laughs>